Hello and welcome back to Desktop Publishing with Cork Express. My name is Martin Turner and this week, as promised, we're going to be talking about conditional styles. Well, conditional styles enable you to do things which are, let's look at the screen, um, uh, complex operations, repetitive operations and hard to check operations and do them reliably, quickly and easily. There is some investment of time creating your uh, conditional style, uh, depending on what you're doing. Uh, but uh, for something which you're doing again and again and again, uh, it really isn't very much. Uh, and you'll find, particularly if you have the same kind of documents a lot, that it's well worth the time and energy of creating some styles. Even some very simple styles, on pretty much any layout these days, I'm using at least some kind of conditional style. Well, let's look at what we can do. So over here, we've got a drop cap. Now you, you saw the drop cap uh, for the, uh, the book we did the other week, and you saw that we had a different uh, letter type from uh, the rest of the document. And in this particular case, I've got um, uh, drop cap font. We'll have a look at that. I've got a style sheet for it. I've got Anglo-Saxon caps. Uh, they're kind of Anglo-Saxon, a bit pseudo, but they're okay. 15 point, it's bigger than the, the, the regular text, which is why it peers over the top. Uh, and I've got stroke turned on. I've got no fill. So we're using some of the uh, Cork Express 2017 uh, special features. Now, uh, if you want to do a regular drop cap, uh, then uh, I'm going to turn the conditional style off on that and go to uh, just the regular drop cap. It's going to come out like that because the drop cap doesn't have within it the uh, the font itself for the first letter, uh, which I always think is a little bit cheap, but that's okay. But if we go now to conditional style and drop cap, we get that. Okay, down here, we've got uh, cats and hats, a consortium of felines with head apparel, reds under beds, a person's of left-wing persuasion. And I want you to imagine that, that your, your first thought on this is you want to bold the first word in each. Uh, cats and hats, reds under beds, gray men in gray suits, and you realize that you actually bolding the gray on its own isn't enough. So now you want to bold uh, until the M dash. This is really very easy uh, with a conditional style. Um, and uh, we'll just see it working like that. Again, you could uh, just undo that for a second. You could uh, uh, just make that all normal. Uh, you could go through and manually do uh, 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 command or control uh, shift B for each one. But then if you change your mind later on, uh, it's gonna be a pain to fix that. So, um, uh, bold, oh, sorry, wrong one, bold first word, uh, bold until M dash. Okay, what else have we got? So over here, we've got a film script and Mike uh, has trouble remembering his lines. So he's asked someone to uh, highlight all of his text. So I've done the highlighting with a simple uh, Quark Express 2017 text shading style. Uh, it's just yellow with uh, uh, left, uh, right, top, and bottom, just a little bit to make it look uh, not too cheap. Uh, and, um, uh, but we don't want to have to go through all the way. So let me just uh, turn that off again for that entire section, no conditional style. And we'll go back to uh, normal. And uh, I'm starting with that. Um, and uh, what we're gonna do is uh, select them all and uh, we will put uh, dialogue and bang. It's, it's not only found the uh, correct uh, I don't know what's happened to the, the formatting there, but it's not only found the correct ones for Mike, but it's also avoided uh, here where Mike is used as a name in the play. That will be a very elementary error. Now, what about this one? Um, we've got, uh, turn the conditional style off. We've got a load of really silly acronyms. The Parent Cribble Trust, the uh, Daughters of Zoo Managers, uh, the Friends of Pete Worldwide and the uh, Men of Great Works and Children Who Prefer X-Men. Um, and uh, you get this a lot in, in kind of corporate uh, documents where you have endless numbers of these things. And what you often want to do, uh, they're correctly declaring them, so you're supposed to put in brackets after the first use of the abbreviation what it stands for. But I want to just uh, bold the first use of it. Well, um, with a, uh, a style sheet, a, a, a conditional style sheet, I can um, bold a name body on first use. And there it goes. And even though PQT is used again here, 
uh, it doesn't use it up. And if we just add some more, uh, the uh, uh, NPN uh, neutral uh, people of uh, the North, um, uh, it, it doesn't need me to tell it beforehand what those things are, it works it out of itself. A uh, couple more. Um, so I've, I've got this, uh, let's just turn that one off. Uh, I've got this list and I know that if I type Q that can be converted as a dingbat. So if I put zap dingbats now, uh, that'll become uh, that. But I really don't want to go through all of them if I've forgotten to do it the first time. So uh, just a little bit of um, uh, a conditional style there. And then finally, what about this one? I've got these little graphs. Where have they come from? Well, let's turn that off. Uh, and you'll see this is done with the font Chartwell, which I've talked about before. It's not a free font. You have to buy it if you want it. Um, if you use it a lot, it really is worth the money. Uh, and the way Chartwell works is you have to kind of uh, make these numbers and then color them in separately. Uh, and uh, that's a real pain. And then when you've done that, you change the font to uh, chart well, um, uh, and we'll have a look at which one it is. Chart well, uh, good grief, where are they? Chart well lines vertical or something like that. Um, uh, and uh, they really are quite hard to find. Chart well bars vertical. And then you've got to uh, turn on uh, discretionary uh, ligatures, and then it even doesn't come up the right side. Well, not a problem because a conditional stub, once you've worked out how to do it the first time, will sort that out uh, in an instant. Uh, and I've even managed to get my text down the side here. And if I want to have, say, some in amber to show that by comparison with uh, two other things, so uh, that's us, that's my comparison one, that's my comparison two, uh, that looks okay, yellow's okay, um, but here, uh, for some reason, we're red or green. And all that is done with conditional styles. Well, let's look at the anatomy of how they work. So, uh, okay, we clearly turned that one on for some reason. Oh, I, I turned the highlighting text on, uh, don't want that. So um, uh, we'll go back to normal with that. Uh, and we're going to, yeah. And you'll see that if I check on normal here, with a conditional style att attached, it will, it will normal as much as it can, but it will still respect the conditional style. Um, Okay, let's, let's look at this one first. This is a really easy one, bold until M dash. So all this does uh, is you've got apply or go. So you can move around or you can apply something. Apply what? If I, if I put go, then the next thing disappears. It just moves you to a different place uh, on, the, uh, on the text. I'm gonna do apply. I'm gonna apply normal. Um, I think I just changed that by accident. Up to, I, I want a normal bold. So uh, I'm gonna apply um, body bold up to the first use of character uh, M dash. Now I could make that the second use, let's just try that. Uh, and now you'll see that it bolds right the way up to the second one, which on the first line works, but the others don't have a second one. If I uh, put a second one in, it makes no sense now. Um, uh, then you'll see that it, it, uh, it debolds that. So uh, we'll go back to that um, and uh, just change that back to a, a one. Um, and that repeats every paragraph. So it starts working again every uh, paragraph it finds. And if we just go back there, you'll see that it's all change. Now, let's look at a slightly more complicated one. Uh, let's look at Mike and Jerry, uh, whatever's happened to them. Uh, and we're gonna go up to Mike, and it's Mike colon, so that's how it's finding it. I could have done Mike colon tab, but I just need the colon. Uh, and um, uh, as, as long as we're not having Mike colon in the text itself, we certainly won't have Mike colon tab in the text, then we're gonna be fine. And then once it's got to Mike, I do apply, a highlight as a paragraph style, so it's gonna affect the entire paragraph. I could do highlighted uh, just to the word Mike. Let's try that and then it just gets the word Mike in, so it's a character style. But I'm doing a paragraph style because I want the entire text uh, bolded, the entire paragraph. And again, this repeats conditional style every paragraph. Um, really very simple. Okay, uh, you'll see that this one uh, is gonna be just as simple to do. It's apply zapfting bat. Uh, okay, that's a style sheet called zapfting bat. It's got to be a style sheet uh, through 
uh, first usage of text Q. Uh, and it repeats the conditional style this time at text Q. So every time it finds a Q, it starts again, which is why it can then click all the way through them. If we just change that and make that uh, to every uh, paragraph, then only the first one of the line would be affected and that would not be as good. So we're gonna go back to uh, character queue would have been just as good actually as text queue. And that works. Now, a bit more complicated is this one. So here, um, what it's gotta work out is um, how do I determine, the computer is saying, how do I determine what is the first use of an acronym? Well, the answer is, if it's the first use, it should be declared with the brackets. Uh, so if it's not declared with the brackets, there's gonna be a proofread, it's gonna have to find that, that there is actually a pretty nifty utility which will work these things out. Um, and uh, then what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, go through the text um, up to uh, that first bracket. So it's go up to first use of text, um, open bracket. And now go backwards through, so I can do up to, through, backwards through. I'm going backwards through the text of the. So in what I'm doing now, it's not case sensitive. What I'm doing now, I'm always having the acronym brackets. Now this, this obviously uh, relies on you having a pretty good house style where people are told how to declare things. But again, that's the work of the editor when preparing the document. And if you're the editor, uh, you're gonna have to do that anyway. Uh, if you don't, then um, it, it'll all look ragged. And of course, this is actually gonna help you as the editor to find those areas. In fact, sometimes I use conditional styles just to find me particular errors and I delete them afterwards. And you can do that very easily. Well, okay, so what's happening next is it's going through uh, the text to the, uh, not doing anything yet, because I don't want the to be bolded. And now it applies body bold, that same style I had before, up to the first character use of uh, open brackets. Up to does not include, so that will be through, up to and including, up to not including. And the result is this. So, um, what it's done is uh, it goes up to the PQT, brackets parent couple trust, and for the DSN. Now, if I delete that, um, then uh, that's gonna disappear uh, because it can no longer sense that uh, it's gotta work there. And if I delete one later on, the whole thing, uh, well, actually, it's not gonna be the whole thing, but uh, again, I put the the back in. If I delete that uh, open bracket, then it's go going wrong. And that's gonna, again, help you to do things. Now, I've got one more. I think I've given you some examples now. I've got one more, and this one really is quite complicated. And that's because the, uh, the chart well styles are complicated. So what are we gonna do? Okay, let's have a look at that. So first, we are going to apply chart well bars amber through three characters uh, and uh, its number of characters. It's not a particular character. So the way that Chartwell works, let's just turn that off. Um, so no conditional style uh, on that um, uh, or that one. Uh, no conditional style, we'll make all those normal. Um, is you get two numbers a plus is the separator, two numbers, plus, separate, plus, uh, and so on. And if you want them different colors, you've got to color them in, uh, which is, uh, I just personally think is a huge pain. Um, but uh, with this, I've made some style sheets. Uh, so uh, Chartwell bars, dark blue, uh, Chartwell bars, uh, amber, Chartwell bars, green, and light blue, and so on. Uh, and, um, uh, I'm now gonna go back to my uh, style sheet, uh, conditional style sheet, and apply Chartwell bars amber through three characters. That's my first three, as you can see there, 19 plus. Um, and then I'm gonna apply Chartwell bars light blue three, uh, through three characters. 34 plus, and now I'm gonna apply Chartwell bars dark blue through two characters because there's no plus at the end. If I did three, it wouldn't make any difference. Um, and then I'm gonna apply a paragraph I've, I've made for this entire thing, 
through to the end of the sentence. Now I go backwards through to find this text uh, that I've got, uh, and um, uh, let's just pull that across there so I can see what I'm doing. Um, and the text I'm, I'm, I'm working on is dot, full stop. So going backwards through until I find that. And now I'm going to apply uh, a style called uh, delta small, it's just a small character style, through the end of the paragraph. So what's happening here? Well, um, let's apply that. Uh, Actually, it doesn't find a dot, so it keeps going back through. So there is no dot. Um, so what's happening here? Um, let's go back to uh, normal. Um, oops. Uh, it finds my numbers, and it correctly changes those to yellow, chart well, correct font, with discretion ligatures turned on, which is what chart well needs. Then 34 plus, same thing, uh, and then 22. And then it applies the uh, paragraph style, which makes this work together, it fits them together using indents. And then it goes back and makes all of this text uh, delta small text. Uh, let's try that again. So um, again, chart well through three characters, chart well through three characters, chart well through two characters. Um, just like to see those, you can see those different things. Chart will bars cap through end of the sentence. I've no idea why I called it that. It must have made sense to me at the time. Uh, go backwards through a uh, dot. So go backwards to the beginning. Uh, and then apply a, sm a delta small through the end of paragraph. And the job's done. Uh, okay. Well, um, I hope that's whetted your appetite for conditional styles. So, um, We've got a number of ways of making it repeat. Let's just have a quick look at that. At uh, the different uh, ways of repeating text, every time you get to a particular text, every time you get to a particular character, every time you get to a conditional style marker, uh, and every paragraph. And those conditional style markers are a special character you insert uh, here in conditional style marker. I hope you can see that. Um, and uh, basically, uh, that should give you uh, enough of an idea of the kinds of things that conditional style sheets can do. So just to recap for ourselves, um, they are for complex operations, repetitive operations, and hard to check operations. Uh, and, and you can actually use conditional style sheets uh, for uh, checking things which are hard to check, uh, such as, for example, my um, uh, friends with the funny acronyms, uh, very helpful then in proofreading. Uh, you can use it for these very repetitive things, going right the way through a 4,000 page script to put all the mics in, in highlighter. It's going to be a problem for somebody. Uh, this is, a, a, a again, a, a repetitive operation. Uh, and these are complex operations, which uh, you could easily get wrong. And in fact, when I was doing a lot of these, I used to get them wrong all the time. So conditional style sheets are godsend for that. Well, that's all we've got time for this week. Uh, thank you for watching. I'm Martin Turner, author of Desktop Publishing with Cork Express 2017. The book is available. Please get yourself a copy. And I look forward to speaking with you next time. In the meantime, happy corking. Thank <laughs> you.